here and in Japan. Maglev engineers are developing frictionless rail systems that propel trains at speeds up to 275 miles per hour. Throughout history, humanity has been driven by a relentless pursuit of progress, constantly seeking new ways to overcome distances and bridge the gap between cultures and civilizations. From the ancient pathways traced by our ancestors to the revolutionary inventions that define our modern era, one element remains constant, the quest for speed and efficiency in transportation. For millennia, the wheel stood as a symbol of innovation, propelling us forward on our journey of exploration and connection. But what if I told you that the very concept of the wheel, which has guided us through centuries of progress, is being reimagined in the form of a revolutionary transportation technology? Yes, you heard it right. I am talking about the maglev train, a marvel of modern engineering that defies conventional notions of locomotion. Unlike traditional trains that rely on wheels and tracks, the maglev train hovers effortlessly above its guideway, propelled forward by the power of magnets. But how does this magnetic marvel work? And what ancient principles does it draw upon to propel us into the future? Join us today as we are on a journey through time and technology, exploring the fascinating mechanics behind the maglev train and uncovering the threads that connect us to our past while propelling us toward a new era of transportation. In modern times, some countries have used powerful electromagnet technology to be the first to build high-speed rail systems called maglev trains. By using magnetism to do away with the need for standard steel wheels and tracks, these innovative trains glide effortlessly above specially designed guideways. Because of this new technology, there is almost no friction between the rails, which lets maglev trains reach amazing speeds. They can easily go over 300 miles per hour. But maglev technology is interesting for more than just how fast it works. Maglev trains are quieter and less vibrational than regular trains. This means that people can enjoy a smooth ride without the bumps and rumbles that are typical of regular trains. Because there is less shaking and friction, maglev trains are more reliable. They break down less often and are less likely to be delayed by bad weather. Emile Bachelet was an American engineer who was born in France and worked in France. And he was the first person to file patents for magnetic lift maglev technologies. This was back in the early 1910s. Professor and engineer Robert Goddard from the United States had written about the idea of maglev levitation in a paper in 1904. Soon engineers started making plans for train systems based on this vision of the future. They thought that soon people would be able to get on magnetically propelled cars and go from place to place quickly and without many of the safety and maintenance issues that come with regular trains. Maglev trains are different from regular trains because they use different ways to move power. Maglev trains are not driven by engines like regular trains are. Instead, they use a quiet but strong force. Instead of burning fossil fuels, these trains move forward thanks to the interaction of electrified coils set in the guideway walls and the track itself. This creates a magnetic field that moves the train forward in a very efficient and environmentally friendly way. If you've ever played around with magnets, you know how interesting it is that they can both attract and repel things. This interesting idea is the root of electromagnetic power, which is what makes maglev train systems work. It all starts with a strong electrical source that turns on metal coils that are placed carefully along a special track or guideway. Attached under the train car are strong steering magnets that are built right into the system. These parts work together to make a magnetic field that moves the train forward with amazing speed and accuracy. This shows how elegantly simple and smart maglev technology is. Let's break it down more. The principle behind the operation of maglev trains involves a magnetized coil embedded within the track, known as the guideway, which interacts with large magnets mounted beneath the train carriage. This interaction causes the train to levitate at an exact distance above the track, usually between 0.39 and 3.93 inches, 1 to 10 centimeters. When it is in this levitated state, power is sent to the coils built into the walls of the guideway. This makes a complex network of magnetic fields. Together, these fields move the train along the track using a dynamic system in which the electric current changes direction to change the magnetic coil's polarity. So the magnetic field in front of the train 
pushes it forward, and the magnetic field behind it gives it extra thrust, making the movement along the track smooth and quick. Maglev trains don't have any friction because they float above the track on a cushion of air. Plus, their sleek and aerodynamic forms make this amazing feature possible, which lets Maglev trains reach speeds of over 310 miles per hour, 500 kph. That's twice as fast as Amtrak's fastest passenger train, to give you an idea. As an example, the fastest commercial plane in the world, the Boeing 777, which is often used for long-distance flights, can hit a top speed of about 562 miles per hour, 905 kph. In the future, developers hope that maglev trains will join cities that are up to 1,000 miles, 1,609 kilometers, apart without any problems. At 310 miles per hour, it would take just over two hours to get from Paris to Rome. This would change the way people move between faraway places. Still, some maglev trains can go even faster. During a short run in October 2016, a Japan Railway maglev bullet train sped up to 374 miles per hour, 601 kph. Engineers are hopeful that the technology will work for lines that are hundreds of miles long if it can reach those speeds. Germany and Japan were the first countries to use maglev trains, but they each came up with their own unique ideas and ways of doing things. The TransRapid system was created by experts in Germany using electromagnetic suspension, EMS, technology. But after a failure in 2006 and huge cost increases on a planned route from Munich Central Station to the airport, Germany gave up on its plans to use maglev trains in 2008. Because of this, Asia became the heart of maglev's progress. At the same time, Japanese engineers showed off their own version of maglev trains. These trains use the repelling force of magnets to power an electrodynamic suspension, EDS, system. Japan has added supercooled, superconducting electromagnets, which is a big change from the German type. This new way of doing things not only saves energy, but also shows that Japan is serious about technological progress. It's important to note, though, that the cooling system for these coils helps save energy, but also causes problems with building and maintenance costs which could actually make maglev projects very expensive. Even though the idea of maglev transportation goes back more than 100 years, the world didn't see its first business maglev train until 1984. A low-speed maglev shuttle started running between the Birmingham International train station and an airport terminal at Birmingham International Airport in the UK. It was the first service of its kind. Since then, there have been many start stops and projects that were never finished in the history of maglev technology. Even with these problems, there are currently six operations maglev lines that are up and running. Most of them are in South Korea, Japan, and China. Maglev systems are undeniably attractive because they are fast, smooth, and efficient. However, they have a big problem. They are very expensive to build. Proposed maglev projects in places across the U.S., from Los Angeles to Pittsburgh to San Diego, have been held up by the huge costs of building them, which are thought to be between $50 million and $200 million per mile. Maglev projects are often criticized for being too expensive, with costs that could be five times higher than those of regular train lines. Advocates, on the other hand, say that even though they require a bigger initial investment, Operating costs for maglev trains can be much lower, possibly even up to 70% lower than those of traditional rail systems. As we are amazed by the amazing progress being made in Asia, especially in Japan and China, where big maglev projects are changing the future of transportation, Japan is determined to build a route from Tokyo to Osaka. This would cut the journey of three hours down to just 67 minutes. On the other hand, China's big plans for maglev routes in places with lots of people show a move toward more efficient mass transit over shorter distances. That being said, one thing is for sure, the talk about maglev trains is not over yet. While countries try to figure out the pros and cons of this new technology, it's up to each of us to stay informed, get active, and help shape the future of transportation. So I urge you to join the conversation whether you're a strong supporter of innovation or just interested in what could happen.